start of turn 7, the 16 a.m. turn. And as you can see by the weather over here, I rolled a cloudy weather result. This is the first turn we could have had rain. As you'll see, we'll have a chance to have rain, so we'll probably most likely get it. Uh, rain is very bad for the Germans. Um, it, you can only do assault combats. You can't do mobile combats. Uh, getting off the road movement is just awful. Uh, in fact, I think only the main road stays like a half movement point and minor roads, which are these uh, gray roads that have that uh, sort of move all around the map too, these sort of gray ones, they become uh, one movement point. And then just even like trails disappear basically and everything becomes, it's a mess. It's horrible. It's awful. And you get almost no maneuverability for what is a very highly mobile force for the Germans becomes just basically stuck in the mud, literally. So we dodged a bullet uh, by not getting a rain turn. Also, by not getting a rain turn, um, that let us use the airport here at Solzi, which this unit or this stack is guarding. Uh, that airport can supply two units. Uh, doesn't flip artillery if you've used artillery, but it supplies anything else. So what I decided to do was supply uh, that stack because it was already on emergency supply and it had some potent uh, motorized infantry in it and I kept the stack in supply even though it technically was already in supply. I don't want to endanger it by letting it go into emergency supply and then get cut off. Um, and so the trade-off is, is that this stack is actually an emergency supply and there's two units actually out of supply at the very bottom. I don't think that's going to be a huge deal. Um, mainly because next turn I can just elect for them to get supply and then more of these other stacks will just go into emergency supply. So I can do that kind of shuffle game. But the truth is I'm, I'm, I'm kind of in a, bad, in a bad way here with the Germans. And uh, as we'll see, the first uh, chit I drew was the 8th Panzer. So luckily the 8th Panzer goes first, which is, I think, good for the 8th Panzer because they need to start... Oh yeah, that's the other thing. I rolled for initiative. This is hilarious. Well, well it's sad for the Soviets. Soviets, once again, had uh, just outrolled them by one. It was a 9-8 to eight result, but because the Germans had gotten a plus one for a mobile combat they conducted that turn, uh, it was a tie result, and as we know, ties uh, go to the person who had uh, initiative previously. So that means the Germans, once again, have now had seven turns of straight initiative. That's pretty crazy. It's pretty wild. Uh, but um, part of the reinforcements included more elements of the SS. As you can see here, they got um, the, really all the bulk of the SS units. There's a couple more over here they'll get on the very last turn of the game. Actually, right before the last turn, 17 a.m., so two turns before. Uh, and we got this uh, bicycle uh, infantry uh, battalion, and it's actually up here. It's going to help out the third motorized efforts. There it is. Anyway, so we also got that, and as you can see, we got another activation marker for the SS units. So they now have two. And that meant that the, the Germans could put in uh, six activation markers, right? And because they did that, that meant the Soviets could put in seven on theirs. And this is kind of where you start to question, should the Germans be trying to put less activation markers in? I mean, I don't think so because of how bad my situation is, but part of this game is saying, like, should I be putting less in to give my opponent less opportunity to put his activation markers in? I don't know. To me, I've never really made that kind of call where I'm like, i got to have less activations. I'm always just like, no, I want everything I can to move. And maybe that's a bad strategy in some cases, right? Well, regardless of all that rambling, that meant the third tanks is the only uh, formation marker for the Soviets not thrown into the cup this turn. Otherwise, they have um, just everything hiding in there. So it's going to be kind of a question of who gets to go when. Um, because let's just take a little quick look. So as you can see, I did all the supply, of course. We talked about those units. Uh, amazingly, all the Soviet units stayed in supply. At least I thought it was going to be difficult for them to do so until I realized that this rail line uh, connects with that road, but also just comes down here to this minor road as a Soviet supply source, and there's no unit interdicting it. Um, so it's possible for them to trace supply. And it wasn't a rain turn. If it's a rain turn, you get smaller trace supply routes, you can, and you can't use trails if you're leg infantry. Uh, only that guy remained out of supply. He could not get back in supply, but because these guys were pushed out uh, by this road, they were able to reestablish supply. I almost probably should have kept that armored car there. Uh, if I would have, then that, that would have uh, cut off uh, some supply, or at least put people in emergency supply up there. Uh, but regardless, everybody else is pretty good. Everybody's doing not bad. So that's Uja Gorsh I'm less, I'm less worried about, even though I think it's going to be a stalemate and difficult to punch through. Um, but the main issue is this. 
I've got a lot of forces surrounding Solzy. So I need to figure out what I want to do if I want to hunker down for another turn and try to guarantee holding the airport, or if I want to strike out and try to take out some units um, while I still can before it's a rain turn and I can't conduct overruns and whatnot. Because, you know, I'm, I'm not so afraid of them really cracking this. I mean, they'll probably do damage and it'll suck, but, you know, this stack's very defensive and they've really got to get through that one before they can tackle that stack. Uh, mainly because of the fact that there's a river around here and that halves uh, your attack if you go through that hex side. Uh, not across the bridge, I guess, but anything else is just halved, so it's very difficult to get uh, good surround attacks on it. Uh, so the question is what we want to attack here and what we want to use to attack, and it's going to take some thought because the other question, the, the, the larger issue, of course, is that there's just this guy. He's hanging out. He's got some artillery up there. Uh, these guys up here are very much of a worry at the 70th is drawn. They could easily come over this artillery uh, gathering. It's just artillery units and have their way with them. Um, or at least get a you know, decent attack on them. Uh, there's only one tank holding off the 183rd, which does have the, its activation mark in the cup this turn. Uh, activation marker in the cup this turn, so it could get drawn. That's just one guy. And then over here, we've got you know, the full complement of the 180th here. And it's just a question of like, you know, I only have a couple tanks here. This is a tank, I believe, in a, yeah, two tanks. This is a tank and a motorcycle and an armored car. Yeah, you know. I'm really kicking myself for not bringing an HQ unit over here. That was a huge mistake. That was a bad play. I meant to do it. I was thinking it back in the day. I just didn't, or a few turns ago. I was like, I should bring HQ over. By not bringing HQ, of course, I cannot use some of these army units. That's the big uh, real issue for me here. Because it's the 8th Panzer, I kind of want to get something going here, or I want to try to do an attack. I don't know, you know, try to get something happening. But the truth is, without an HQ, I can't do um, close air support, and I can't call in this army artillery or rocket unit. I can't even command these units to help me out with the battle. Um, there's also this engineering unit, you know what I'm saying? And the kicker is that the uh, SS, of course, could do that, because they have a headquarters unit, so they can start bossing around uh, army units. Uh, but the problem is, is that... They don't have any um, mobile-capable units, so they don't even get to do mobile attacks. They have to use assaults. Ah, oh, it's very frustrating. Um, yeah, so I don't know. The big question is, what is the 8th Panzer going to do? They're up first. They need to begin thinking long-term or how they want to end the scenario. Uh, if we hold on to Solzy for one turn after this, for every turn after this we hold it, the victory hex, which of course is this, this stack, we get plus three victory points, which is big. I also opted not to take, uh, I could have taken those airplanes for minus 6 VP, but you know, even though they're very high quality and it would be great for me to have because I really don't have much of an air force, I've kind of uh, outmatched here by the Soviets by quite a bit. Um, I didn't want to give up the VPs because I've already lost so many due to armor step losses that I really need to hold out for this Soltsy strategy. I think that's the goal, is to try to get as many victory points as I can out of holding Soltsy and uh, hopefully not just being totally destroyed in other places and, and maybe doing some good damage. So I'm rambling on about them because I'm going to think of their turn next. So when I come back, it'll be the 8th Panzer and um, we'll, get this, uh, we'll get this turn rolling. All right, I've given this turn some thought, and um, there's just so many different options. And I mean, this is what I love about this game. It's a lot of fun. Like, I didn't have it play out this way last time. And, you know, when I played the other scenarios in Rose to Moscow, they play out, there's sort of a path you know it's going to happen, but then the way it kind of gets there and how it eventually turns out is often quite different. It's a lot of fun. I mean, obviously, you can tell I enjoy playing this game. That being said, this has been a particularly puzzling turn because I do not know what is the best way to not jeopardize everything, but I guess that's sort of the situation I put myself in. So as I see it, we have three key flashpoints. We have the Soltsy area here. We sort of have this uh, lone unit and the artillery up there. And then we have this issue of uh, the 180th and what we're going to do with it over there. In brief, here are my thoughts. I'm going to take, I believe, let's get real, let's get nice and There we go. I'm going to do a little shuffling of units, and the goal is we're going to attack the 21st tanks up here. I'm going to be taking units out of the strong point hex. In fact, the two motorized infantry are going to come out along with a anti-tank I think I have in here that's red box. It's going to come up here, and the stack's going to move up here, and they're going to come up this way, and we're going to do attack on the 21st tanks. Why am I doing that? Well, 
For one thing, I need to strike out at the forces coming at Solzi, and I need to damage the units that are coming at me. And the only way I can do that is start generating three to one or higher odds. Um, because of my constrained maneuverability and position, I'm not really going to be able to really dictate or get the kind of sweet odds I want on the choice targets. Like, I really want to go after, um, you know, this armored car unit and the infantry. It's really nice, and it's also in a really threatening position. Uh, but it's a little far out. I think instead what I'm going to do is, and they're pretty quality troops here. That's a 6 and a 6. I mean, the 70th is pretty quality units. The 21st tank is a different story. There's a 4, a 4, and a 5. So they'll put a 5 up, but that means I'll probably get at least a 2 uh, differential on ER. Uh, I might be jeopardizing a, a motorized infantry, but I can do it. They're full strength, you know, so got to do it. Uh, also, in case they get attacked somewhere else, though, I'm going to be able to use their reaction move because they have pretty good quality rating. I think they're like sixes or sevens. Yeah, they're sevens. So the chances are I'll be able to get that roll and then react move. So that's kind of the other thing I'm kind of hoping on. I'm hoping that the quality uh, training that these units have received will serve them well here in this battle. So that's Flashpoint 1, Soltsy. I think what we're going to do with this guy, and we can go ahead and move these guys because there's no battle involved here. So... The downside is I just I I've, I've messed up with the artillery. I've really I mismanaged moving them, and they're in a bad position. And there's nowhere for me to put them where they will be able to be effective very quickly. Uh, that's total mismanagement, and that could cost me the game. There's a lot of artillery here. There's a lot of power, and there's just no way I can really effectively get them in over here without being intercepted. And I can't really hang around this road in case the one e third activates. So, and of course, this is just a mess of shit. <laughs> I'm sorry, inappropriate words there. Um, it's just a mess of trails and forests. So it, there's no good move. Not to mention that I could be potentially attacked from units from that northern strong point up here, possibly. I don't think that's really going to happen, but it could. So we're just going to have to send these guys on the most long quest ever, and maybe in two turns they'll be able to get into the game, as they say. But uh, I don't really see it happening anytime sooner than that. I'm going to keep them up here. I'm not going to go down here because I'm afraid of the 183rd too much. Up here is minimal threats, and I can also minimize those threats by putting myself uh, where they'd have to attack across the stream. So all these guys have five movement, uh, orange box, orange circle. So they're going to go one, two, three, four, and just stop there because they can't go anywhere else. I'm going to take this tank, and he's going to come join this force over here. And one, and two, and three, and four, five, six, because it's a trail and other, and it's in range of control. And then the real question was, what was I going to do with these other guys? And because the thing is, I won't really, I couldn't get good odds on attacking the stack. It's a ten. Uh, this is now a nine. This is three. I think it's a six. Yeah, it's three, six total. So I would have uh, what fifteen if they all attacked. But then of course he could have his artillery come in and help. I need to take care of the artillery. If I'm going to start dismantling the 180th, and if I'm going to start taking apart uh, its ability to be strong and react, I need to take out its artillery. It's sort of key. So we're going to make a daring move here. We're going to take the stack here, and they're going to come and actually attack this artillery. And they can just make it. That's one, two, three, four, five, six. All right, because there's actually a guy who puts his own control out. It's that guy. This counter is misbarked. It should actually have a Nozock banner which is what the yellow stripe at the top means. Uh, artillery does not have zone of control, so that's a mistake. Uh, Anti-tank does, though. So we're going to make an attack here. We're going to just, uh, I guess, go ahead and go forward with that attack. So what do we got here? We have, so the reason, uh, because there's another defensive unit there, this artillery can use its uh, own defensive fire. And it's going to do that because, obviously, if it just relied on its own defensive strength and that, it'd be three. It'd be a two to one mobile attack and it wouldn't probably be good for these units. Um, if it uses its artillery power because it can, because it's being attacked and it's in that hex, one unit automatically coordinates according to the rules. It's gonna have a six defensive power. Actually, it can't be higher. Oh, that's so true. It's only gonna be a four. Hmm. You can't use artillery strength to be more than the total defense or its set attack strength. Like, I would only have two here, right? So he can't add more than two points. I was thinking he could add all four. That was a bad call. I'm glad I caught that here. So this actually is going to be a better move than I thought. All right. 
Well, he's going to have to do this. He wants to use artillery because um, we want to try at least maybe get a bad result or at least try to stymie them. So by doing that, this now becomes a four stack. Let's go ahead and write our two our odds right here. So four. We're attacking with three, four, five, six. So because of that, we actually get three to two odds. <laughs> Pretty pretty weak, but it's it has to do. Okay, so who's gonna be our point unit? Uh, you know, it really shouldn't be this tank, but it's gonna be the. Uh, but the chance of getting hurt is so great. Okay, it's gonna be this motorcycle. Uh, I'm probably gonna pay for this. Actually, we're just gonna get the armored car. The eighth mo eighth panzer has tons of uh, mobile capable mo mobile capable attack units, so we can afford to lose an armored car or two. Um, and it doesn't cost me a victory point. So we'll make the armor car our lead unit. Uh, so now we'll calculate the rest stuff. These guys have no reaction movement, they can't combat refuse, and there is, uh, they can't do a no retreat. So those options are out the window. Um, they could do close air support because they are within range of their HQ, and I think they will try to do that. They will actually bring in two planes, yeah, and they'll try to bring in two. Well, actually, they're not going to do that. I'll tell you why. It's cloudy. Uh, it's a mobile turn. So those DRMs are plus three and plus one, so it's four. I would have to spend command points to get a plane in action uh, because they have such low ER ratings. And I don't really want to use my high ER rating planes uh, for this battle in particular. That's my best plane. Uh, I don't want to use that necessarily. Even this guy would still be just a two. I'd have to roll a two or one. Um, just to get this guy to fly without using command points. <sighs> and I think I'd rather save my command points for when I get attacked here, because this is, you know, that's my call. It's my be a bad call, that's the way it is. So we won't be using air power there. The Germans will not be using air power. We, need, we don't have an HQ anyway, so we can't call in air power. Okay, so we did that. Uh, there's no coordination required, because we're all from the same unit, and we're all in one hex, and we're attacking, and nobody's disrupted, so we're good there. So let's do the modifiers. We have, um, let's go ahead and make this a little wider so I get a little more room. Uh, we got defense terrain. We got plus one for it being a, uh, a village there. So that's plus one village. Uh, the ER differential will have to be this unit, so it's three. That's minus three ER. And actually, I get combined arms bonus because I'm attacking with both armor and motorcycle infantry, so that's. Minus one combined arms bonus. Uh, and I think that's all, all the bonuses that apply. Yeah, because it doesn't have anything else. So if we total all these things up, then what we see is we get a minus three to the roll. Okay, so we got three to two, three to two mobile attack. Minus three to the roll. Let's see what we got here. Oh my goodness. A 10. A 10. <laughs> Fates, the fates may, fates may be speaking here about the German efforts. Uh, a three or two with a ten, I guess, so it's uh, going to become a seven. Oh, this is this is bad. Attacker two, defender one. Ah, oh, that's just not what we wanted. This was actually now became the worst attack. This guy takes a loss. He's out. That leaves him there. But I have to take two step losses, so I'm going to lose one here. Oh, that's devastating. Oh yeah, you can satisfy it. And, oh, that's so bad. Do I take an armor loss and keep this guy? I have to take an armor loss. Ah! Uh, I'm gonna lose a victory point. I'm down to eight victory points. Oh, that was not what we wanted. That was the one result actually on the entire table that we did not want to get. <laughs> Literally. I mean, the one, one above that is attacker one, defender retreats. Um, damn, I mean, I just really wanted to run away, but, well, that, that did not go well. So that's that attack. Move those guys. It's on to Salty. Let's, let's hope the dice gods are a little friendlier here. I'm going to give myself a little room on the left so we can have a little writing area. All right, so our plan here is to take this deck. They're going to go there. Remember this red dot. It's just a visual marker for me for the strong points. Um, we're going to take those two guys out there, right? And then what we're going to do is we're going to take this uh, 
self-propelled artillery, our friend self-propelled artillery. He's going to come up there, but of course he's under emergency supply. So what we got to do is put him actually underneath these guys. I should have moved him first. Because the motorized are not, but he is. Okay, so we're going to be attacking the stack up here. First of all, they're all red box movements. They can uh, combat refuse if they want. And I think they will try to combat refuse. Um, so they're going to conduct a lead check on the ER unit. We're going to see if we can do that. It's going to be pretty low chances. I think that the five, yeah, we'll just put this guy on top. So, you know, 50 50. Let's see. What do you know it? A three. So yeah, he gets to react out. So he doesn't even get to face his combat. He gets to run away. Um, but in a way, that's okay. Because we just wanted to push guys away. That's really what we need to do is just buy time. I mean, I would love to kill units. I mean, killing steps would be really nice right now. Um, if it uh, passes, you retreat two hexes and attacking red box MA units may advance up to two hexes. Um, and that means I can't really combat more this turn. So this guy has to retreat to, I'll just go up to there. And honestly, I, would, I don't really want to advance. I mean, I guess I could. Question is, do I really want to bring this stack over here and just put more pressure on this front? Because I will get another activation, and it may very well be before the 70th can move. But I really hate to give up this airport. Uh, and I have good access to attack that unit next turn, but... I think we'll just hold. Let's just hold there. This just gives us some good reaction ability, and we just need to maintain interior lines. So we'll just keep our uh, two hex distance from any hex that can react. That'd be nice. So we'll just stop there. Okay, so that was the 8th Panzer's turn. Sorry, I thought that would go a little faster because I prepared everything, but of course that attack was so interesting. What turns of fortune, you know? It's really interesting how this game's gone. All right, Soviets. Who's it going to be? The 202, the big 202 is going to move, and of course the 202 is a sort of shell of what it should be probably because I destroyed them so thoroughly earlier. And they are hanging out up there, so let's go ahead and get ourselves a little view. Okay, so what should the 202 do? Well, it's got some things here. It's got the motorcycle some mobile forces. It's got these guys who are really just kind of helping to defend. Oh wait, it's really just this guy, huh? Oh yeah, that's it, right? Did they put anybody in here? Nah, I felt bad. So really it's just this force here. Hmm. Could he join them at three? No, no, two, four, six. This is an eight. So he can't stack with that guy. He could put more guys on there. Or he could just, um... No, it looks like I can still overrun. Hmm. Uh, we don't have enough to really attack, and what we just need to do is be very cautious and have a good defensive position. I think what we'll do is... Hmm. I could put three guys with him, huh? So what we'll do is we'll put these three guys with this guy so we totally protect him. And then this guy who's left the armored car. I wonder if I can get him down. Can he? Could he get this down? Sorry, I'm doing this up off camera. Three. Yes. Or should he just go up here? Yep, he's good there. Eight, one set, three, six, seven, eight. Oh, he could go up there. Okay, that's what he'll do. He'll go, uh, and one, and anyway, he can go up there. He's not going to help fortify that hex. All right. So the 202 is doing some reinforcement duties here. This is kind of why I feel like this is going to be a stalemate uh, opportunity, really, here. I don't know. It's going to take some good rules, I think, for the Germans to bust through this line. 
especially the 202 having this depth and defense here and also reinforcing this one unit that was quite vulnerable but is no longer as vulnerable as it once seemed. Okay, so who's gonna come up next for the Germans? The SS. There we go. SS. So we got the 8th Panzer, the SS. It would have been nice to get the 8th Panzer again. It would have actually been kind of nice. But you never know. Sometimes it's also nicer to wait a little bit and see what your opponents are going to do. So the thing about the SS is, let's see. So this is sort of their frame of operation. Let's go ahead and erase what we've written here. Oh, we can get rid of that X too. Nice. So the SS has some powerful units, but as I described earlier, or you know, said earlier, they don't have any mobile attack capability. So we have a five, a three, uh, another two there. These are all good red box stuff, except for that guy, right? But that's okay. And there's another five up here, and he has an engineering unit as well. So I mean, the combined power is what? Five, eight, uh, 10, uh, 15. So he has 19 attack factors. That's pretty good. Um, there we go. So, the goal is going to be using those in the most effective way. And the most effective way, of course, is grouping assaults around units. I think we're going to start over in this unit and unravel the line that way, partially because it's just an easier unit to tackle. Uh, there's already an adjacent 8th Panzer next to it. So the only way, though, you can get that done is if you do an assault turn. That's sort of the one disadvantage. So we're going to have to get our guys kind of in place and then launch assaults. Um, unfortunately, if we do assault, the halves are MA, so our red box guys here would have three. It would be and one, and two, and three. They can only go there. Um, but if they didn't, they could go and four, and five. Oh, they couldn't really even get in this battle, but they could get up here. Hmm. Yeah, I think we're going to have to do that. Although I also worry about this unit being able to still come up here and cut. But the truth is, is that the way our, we're grouping our forces and where we're going to do it, if these forces stay on this side and stay in supply, that's fine because the salty group can sort of self-supply if it holds the airport, which you know, may not happen. Um, so we're taking a gamble here. We're just going to take a gamble. We're going to give the 180th some operational move, uh, room to, to cut the line in a good way. But, you know, that's the way the cookie crumbles. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to bring this guy down here. Is that what I want to do? Yeah, if I go here, then I'll still be able to kind of move around. And I can always just hop back on the road or come over here. I mean, I'll lose points, but these guys aren't going to go that far. And also, if I come here, I exert zone of control. So I think I will do that. I think he'll just pop down here. That costs him one, two, three, four movement. <laughs> And these guys will just come up the line. So they have and one, and two, and three, and four, and five. Yeah, so they'll come up there. And actually, what we'll do is we'll drop off this artillery. Actually, he may just come along. The artillery has to go hide somewhere else. That's what it'll do. But for now, we'll just kind of group it here. And then we really won't be able to attack here because because you have to do an assault turn in order to get the um, adjacent unit's assault bonus, which essentially means that uh, when you declare an assault turn and you attack a hex, then any uh, units that are on your side that are adjacent to that hex can also add their power to that assault. Um, of course, you'll have to you may incur penalties on getting combat coordination right because you're going to get guys attacking you from more than one hex and whatnot. Um, but it is a way for the Soviets in particular to gang up on a unit and just blow it away on activation after activation. Because if you do it that way and we set it up right, then the SS will get an activation and do an assault. Then the 8th Panzer will get an activation and do an assault. You know, And if you set it up ahead of time and you get a whole turn to do assaults, you can really wear down even a very fortified position. Anyway, that's what the SS is thinking to do there. So they're, but they're not going to attack here because they wouldn't get that assault bonus because they just took a mobile turn, right? I've kind of not been really articulating that because most of the time you take mobile turns with the Germans. Um, so yeah, we got everybody in position. Hopefully next turn we can do something and hopefully keep these guys from getting too crazy with their moves uh, because sadly we just lost things down there. Okay, but we did take out that unit and that unit's going to be vulnerable, so that happens. Okay.
Next, Soviets. We got da, 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 the 183rd. All right, so the 183rd is here, and honestly, they can't do a whole lot. Uh, they can cut the road, and, and now they could just start cutting the road and kind of coming to help out with this and just sort of containing them. Or they could just hold Sitnia, which is not a half bad idea because that's worth a lot of victory points uh, at the end of the game. And that's, that's actually not a real half bad idea at all. Because those artillery units are too far away to get up to. So I think what we'll do is that. And unfortunately, being out of supply reduces your movement by how much? That's the question. Yeah, minus two MP for all non-motorized units. So these guys only have movement of, uh, what is that, two? So I think what they'll do is, and this five becomes halved, so it's two and a half. So I think what we'll do is we'll just go, what is that, one, two? Actually, no, this only counts as half because it's a force, right? And one, yeah, because they're infantry. Although this guy was not infantry, so that actually would be... One, two, and he could still make it though, because he's halved. Okay, great. So he gets there, and then these guys will just come up and um, go one, two, th three. We'll just kind of keep him there, and then that's what they'll do. And maybe if we get the activating formation marker, and there's no oh, we have some artillery unit down here. Let's move him as well. So let's get him in a good position. Come out and one. Yeah, we'll just put him in that thing. Because I think he can make it. Oh, he may not. It's a marsh. It does have to definitely cost three to get into The infamous uh, out of memory on my iPhone struck again. Uh, keeping too many photos and personal memories on my device is keeping me from filming all the wargaming actions. So. Of course, it was right before I finished that turn, and I was being a doofus because, of course, they ended up could moving here because this was only half movements. They were here. It was and one, and then, of course, it would be three movement to get into the marsh. It gives them good defensive terrain, and they can also support the defense of Sitnia up there. Well, that that was unfortunate because it's anticlimactic to have a cut just to come and talk about that, but um, that's the one eight thirds move, so now we'll see who's going to go up for the Germans. Alright, so our friends, the 8th Panzer, they're going to come back and finish up their activations for the turn. Um, so I probably will take a break here because I do want to think about how I want to deal with this situation considering that the cowardly Soviets ran away last turn <laughs> to their advantage. Um, I'm going to decide what I need to do if I want to try to pull back and reinforce our stacks or strike out again at something since we might have the advantage to come up this way, say or come over here and take that out. Um, we'll have to see. So I'm going to come, I'm going to think about it, and then we'll figure out what I'm going to do there. And then also, uh, I could use, like, utilize that assault uh, to help on that attack, maybe, uh, or just take out that artillery. We'll have to see. So I'll think about it, and we'll come back. With the 8th Panzer essentially put into two different areas, and this area largely being a stalemate, because I just don't have the offensive capability with the 8th Panzer alone and no HQ to call in these army units. Uh, this battle is largely going to be dictated by the SS. That means I don't really have anything I can do with this stack. The stack doesn't have enough power to combine with this guy on an assault to make this attack worth it. It wouldn't even be 2 to 1. That's just not good odds for assault. Instead, what I think I'm going to do is have these guys just come and uh, take out this artillery unit. It's already fired. Let's just go ahead and kill it off. Um, I forget if I get points for artillery kills. Uh, does it say? Here, let's find out. For each Soviet armor or artillery, yeah, we get plus one. So that's worth it. So we'll come down and attack that guy. Um, we'll go ahead and do that attack right now. It'll be pretty easy. So it's a mobile attack. He can, he has no option for. Well, we won't bring any airplanes for him to save him. They're not going to do that. He can't react. He can't uh, refuse combat. And he can't do no retreat. So we'll be attacking him straight on. 
We don't need to worry about combat coordination. We have no artillery to use. He has no artillery he can bring in. He is the artillery unit. So this is just going to be a straight up odds battle here. Uh, because he was so lethally effective, or him and his compatriot were so lethally effective, we only have four attack points to his one. Uh, and that should be enough, I believe. So we have four to one. He is still in a town, so he gets minus one for the vill or uh, plus one for the village. Uh, but he also so loses one for ER. I am, or actually, I'm going to put this motorcycle unit up because I cannot afford to lose this armor. So it will be two ER differential. So minus two for ER. We still get our one for combined arms bonus. So that becomes a grand total of minus two. On a four to one mobile attack with a minus two, the roll is, oh man, so high rolls. And a nine. It should have been like pretty much guaranteed death for this unit. Let's see what it actually ends up being. On a four to one, we roll a nine and we take away two. It's just a defender retreat. So we didn't even kill it. Ah, okay. Well, he goes back uh, to Nankoba. That is frustrating. That is very frustrating. I could advance two and get a plus one advantage here. Uh, but honestly, I don't want to get too far away from this. This is the main objective. So we'll just hold uh, there, I guess. Man, that attack did not go how I wanted. Okay. That whole front's been kind of disappointing. Okay. So the Salty situation now, because we haven't seen the 70th or the 21st tanks activate, uh, we have to be a little more cautious here. We could be brave in that initial attack, and it was great to drive back the 21st tanks. That was actually a pretty solid move. But now we need to reconsolidate our holdings over here. And that means that this uh, these two motorized uh, infantry are going to go back to their original hex here. The self-propelled artillery will join his stack, his brethren, where he was originally. So we'll no longer need that emergency supply. Uh, and so with those consolidations, the question becomes, what do we do with this stack? It is a 17. It is very capable still, even if it is injured. And we still want to do some damage and try to hurt the uh, Soviet attack potential. And I think the best way to do that is to strike out at this unit. And here's what we're going to do, actually. We're going to come and overrun it, and then we're going to come back and defend the uh, airplane. Or <laughs> the airplane, jeez. The airfield. Good work, Jay. Okay, so how's that going to work? All these guys are sixes. They're all red box. Wait, we have a five in there. Six, 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 six. No, they're all sixes. So what it's going to be, it's going to be and, one and, because it's out of control. Then it's going to be two NP to overrun this, because it's plus one for the overrun and plus one for the clear terrain. So it's one and a half, and this will be now two and a half, three and a half. And if we succeed, then we can come back and go four and a half, five, and, and get back to the airport. At least that's the goal, right? Things have not been going so well for the Germans, so we shouldn't uh, get overconfident here. These are quality troops. They are sixes. Uh, because we're going to overrun, though, they're not going to be able to really uh, resist uh, what's going on. They can't. This guy can't combat react, for example, or combat refuse, I should say. So we we're going to do that. We're going to come over here and go boom, boom. We're going to overrun. So it is a. Let's just double check the power. That's two, four, um, seven. Yeah, and that's uh, ten there. So it's seventeen. Seventeen to seven. So that is good enough for a 2 to 1 overrun. It's not great. 2 to 1. Um, since he doesn't get the opportunity to do any of those things or use artillery, we could call in an air support unit. I think we actually will try to do that because uh, I really want this attack to go well. So we will bring in this airplane. Uh, I could bring in two, but I, I mean, ugh, I need those planes. And the thing is, I can do that because I have an HQ here, right? So he's going to spend two points on that. Only because the Germans have such quality training do they get to use, and they can use only one airplane. Uh, Soviets cannot use close air support on overruns. They're just not uh, that uh, well equipped yet in this war, right? So only still 41. Uh, okay, so we're going to attack there, or we're going to try to get this roll. We have a plus one for being mobile but a minus two for command points. All right, plus one for being mobile, plus three for being cloudy, so we have a plus four. A minus two, so we'll get a plus two on the roll. Nope, we don't get it, it's a seven. 
Didn't really think that was going to happen, but you have to try. So now we got a two to one roll. The ER differential, the unit we will be, will be putting in front. Uh, I just can't afford to lose any more armor, so it's got to be this motorized infantry. They're just going to take the brunt of it. Uh, so there's no ER differential. It's a six, so he'll actually put, well, they don't get to pick a lead unit. I guess they kind of do. So we'll make it that infantry, right? Um, uh, will they make it the armored car? Well, we'll see. We'll, I think they'll take the infantry. They'd rather take that loss. Okay, so two to one roll. Uh, does he get any modifiers? Nope, he's in the clear. There's no defensive modifiers. We don't get any modifiers. So yeah, just two to one straight up. All right, it's a four. It's actually a decent roll. <gasps> Did I knock any counters over? No, okay, we're good. Okay, we're good, sorry. Drop the, drop the player aid or the, the player aid on top of counters, but it wasn't anything important. Okay, two to one with a four straight up. Defender retreats. Oh, we were so close to getting a loss there. That's okay, though, because we did that, um, and it's an overrun, we get to choose where he goes. He has to retreat two hexes. I think we're going to just have him go uh, one, two, and he becomes disrupted. That won't really matter, though, because I won't be putting a zone of control next to him. That's okay. That'll kind of make him less effective on his turn. That's good. Um, it wasn't armor attrition, so this guy just flowed. That's good. And that was, uh, so we go here. So what I say? We have one and a half, uh, two and a half, three and a half, right? So now it's going to be four and five, yeah. Or four, sorry. Four, four and five, five and. That might have been confusing, but it definitely made sense when I was doing it earlier, and that was definitely the move. So even though they're not really balanced, and it kind of drives my... Wargaming is crazy. Uh, Wargamer, that's my like one anal thing, is I like keeping my stacks really centered. That's my bad. So anyway, we didn't really accomplish any step losses there, but we were able to at least push back a little bit of the attack and even get them disrupted. You know, that's not bad. And we were able to restore our defensive holdings as we had them, which is pretty potent. So we'll have to see what the uh, Soviets can bring in further turns, because that's it for the 8th Panzer. Oh wait, we hit the artillery. God, could I just forget about something that's going to get stuck in the woods? Ugh. It's just really not good for them. They're really just in a really bad position. Well, we know the 183rd is already gone, but they could go again with the activate any formation marker, so we can't just be too careless with how we move these guys. Oh, man, this is so bad. Okay, so I think what we're going to do is we're going to go... So it's not far enough. Uh, that sucks. Okay, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go one, two, and three, and four, five. <laughs> just get them even further away from where they can be useful. Uh, I was just trying to keep them away from getting zapped by Soviet. So yeah, this is gonna make them, uh, it's just gonna be really tough. <laughs> the totally mismanaged artillery assets. Okay, so that was the 8th Panzer. Who's up for the Soviets? Only got uh, five activation chits for the mops. And they choose the 70th. Okay, so the 70th is actually in a pretty interesting position. Uh, this being the bulk of their forces and that disrupted unit over there. So I'll have to decide how they're going to try to set their assault. They definitely were repulsed the last time, if you remember, trying to take on this hex. And now it's back to full strength. Unfortunately, they weren't able to take advantage of that momentary uh, absence of the motorized infantry. So when we come back, we'll take a look and see what the uh, 78th has uh, cooked up or their plans in store for Solzy. So the 70th has the once again, an enviable task of uh, attacking this hex. They're just really, it's the most well-defended hex. There's just no real good way for them to do anything else. I could maybe take these two guys and come attack these hexes. I think that's a 15 and that's a 17. So, I mean, you know, that'd be, what, 32? Um, it wouldn't even be enough to get 2 to 1. This guy's a 17. He would need 34. So, in a sense, that wouldn't even be 
such a great attack. I mean, it's still going to be not even 2 to 1. I can just barely get 2 to 1 by getting all these guys around this hex. And the thought is, like, why just keep pounding on this hex when I really should try to be hitting the weaker sides. And hopefully as I get the 21st tanks evolved, uh, they'll start pushing up and getting around this unit, which of course is really the prize. So I'm hoping to get this unit here, this unit here, this unit here. And that way I can bring some of my other guys up against it and then hopefully get a nice uh, fat assault with one, two, three, four hexes. And ultimately just kind of pin this unit in. But at the same time, I need to keep attacking. I need to always be pressing, you know, uh, as Alec Baldwin would say in Glengarry Glen Ross, right? Always be closing, but here it's like always be pressing. Always be, always be attacking. ABP, baby. ABP, always be pressing. So we're going to keep pressing. So that means we're going to take these guys and they're just basically going to do all that. These are just one moves, which they can do. So the other thing we're going to do is we're going to bring um, the leader in this HQ unit over. And I think he's just going to go there, and this guy's going to go here. Um, and the reason is because they were just too far away. It was more than four hexes away from this spot. Um, so in a sense, I just need them up close. If I want to use their modifiers, I'm going to be using their modifiers because I need to get some, hopefully some air, hopefully some other like advantages. So let's go ahead and like do the battle calculations here. So I've done a little off-camera magic. And I know that uh, this stack, actually, the defending stack has a value of 21. I will be attacking with a total value of 48. Uh, so as you can see, I can get 2 to 1, but I really can't easily get uh, 3 to 1, because I would need, what, uh, 21, 42, 63. Um, and I just don't have the ability to get that many more points through artillery. I think at most I could get 10, but I just... And that's it. That's all my artillery for the uh, 70th. So there's no way I'm going to be able to get more than 2 to 1. Um, so, you know, in a way that's okay, but that's just the best we can do, right? 2 to 1 attacks. That's why we got to hopefully get a good roll and reduce their defense. So now we start thinking, um, what can this stack do? Well, this stack can do a no retreat. And I think last time I did not uh, have this stack do a no retreat, and that was kind of a, a mistake because they have an HQ. Uh, it doesn't even matter. They're in a town. They could actually just pass it anyway. Um, well, let's actually double check though. I say that if they don't have an HQ, they have to make a, a roll. So his leader is there. Oh, his HQ is there. Okay. So he auto passes, getting the no retreat. That's what HQ is very handy for. So if we start doing our DRM, so we know we got plus one for no retreat. We know he's in a, a town, so it's plus two for town. Plus one for a strong point. Um, of course, we know we get minus one for having an engineer. And now we start thinking, okay, it, so we know it's got no retreat. That's what that unit did. So that means it can't combat react. It's already got a full stack, so nobody can react move into that space and help defend. Um, so then you think, okay, we're going to bring planes in. Because uh, we're not going to use artillery, and they don't have any artillery to use because they've been cut off for so long that there's like an artillery unit, but it's totally been fired, and there's no artillery even close, right? That whole forlorn stack that's like, hello, I'm so out of out of control, I'm way out of the battle. Um, no one can help them. So there's no artillery for the uh, Germans to utilize, and we're not going to utilize artillery for the Soviets. As we explained, we can't really get higher odds. So that takes care of that. So we'll just move on to planes. I think probably even comes first, but you know, some of these can be kind of interchangeable in a way. So the Soviets will be throwing their air power and they will be throwing their best air power. They're going to throw a uh, six unit and they're also going to throw in a five unit. And they're going to throw command points at this. What they're going to do is they're going to throw um, two from this HQ into that six. And that's all they're going to put into it. Sorry, there's like a hair here. here. Ah, Dogs. I love you guys, but you are hairy beasts. All right, anyway. So, we have two planes. We'll put that two points towards the sixth plane. And because it is... Let's make sure there's some modifiers for close air support in a town. I don't think there is... Nope. And this technically wasn't even um, a mobile turn. Let me see. Could I see? And one, and two, three. So we could have made it. And one, and two, three. And one, 
Yeah, he could have made it too. Okay, so both of them committed. So this is an assault turn, so we won't get that plus one modifier. This actually will count as an assault turn because we can't do um, mobile attacks anyway because we're attacking a town and a strong point to boot. So we won't get that plus one modifier for the planes, but we will get the plus three for being a storm. So let's go ahead and roll uh, for, let's roll for this first one. So it's going to have to get a two or less in order to be successful. It does not. So it's done. And this one will need, let's see if it's fine. So it's going to need a, what, five or less? Yeah, it's going to need a five or less. All right, we got it. The two. All right, so because we put the two command points into that specific one. Because of that we get, uh, let's see, plus one for close air support. Yeah, Soviets. Um, the Germans will be using, what do they have? Just a couple here. Yeah, they're going to use their planes as well. Well, they might need that for that attack. Uh, this is kind of plan riskiness. So we'll go ahead and do that. And then what we'll do is we'll just go ahead and have this HQ... Oh, you already used your points. Not this HQ. Uh. All right, I gotta find this HQ. Now I'm doing the HQ search. Like I said, normally you'd be using like force. Uh, I'm not gonna use the leader for this. Not for that one, I'm gonna use the HQ there. We'll keep the leader on top because that way we can just instantly get to him. Like I said, normally when you play this game at face to face or even solo, you get to use the force markers and it just really creates a lot less clutter and so you're instantly able to get to that. So this is exaggerated kind of in a sense of how long it takes. Okay, so we now have to roll a three or less because of the three modifier for being rainy and then we took two out of it, so it's just a minus, uh, it's a plus one to our roll. Wait, what am I trying to say? Anyway, I gotta roll three or less. You know what I'm saying? I did not get it. Okay, so that plane did not happen for the Germans. Okay. That was kind of a long shot anyway, but it would have been nice. Okay. So we do the planes. Uh, now we have to do combat coordination, but we actually don't have to because it's an assault. And everybody's from the same formation, so it automatically succeeds in that regard. Let's total up our DRMs here. Let's see, we have plus four, plus five, minus one, so we have a plus four to our roll. <laughs> so hard to crack this, uh, to crack this nut here. So let's see. Oh yeah, rolled a fat 10. Nice. Ah, uh, it would have been nice not to have gotten, I think, an attack retreat. Let's see. The two to one, we roll a 10, but actually it's plus, so it's an attacker one retreat, so. Oh, we didn't even do ER checks. Ah, that's the one thing I missed. Okay, so we'll keep the roll. That was my bad. Um, the lead unit, which we would have had been uh, one of those uh, guys here. It would have been equal, because they would have attacked with one of those. So we'll say with this guy with the lead, because they all are sixes, so he would have attacked with that, so it would have been equal. Okay, so it's an attacker one retreat. Oh, Let's see if we lose, guys. I know, see the stack is becoming unwieldy. All right. This guy loses a step, and everybody retreats. Well, it wasn't that fun. Uh, you can just see how difficult this is going to be for the Soviets until they can somehow crack that airfield and then really, but it's, it might be too late. It may be too late. The Germans may have just fortified it far too well and the Soviets are not going to be able to crack it. Ah, I just don't know. Um, we'll see. I get another attempt. I was kind of hoping they wouldn't retreat so I could just have everybody close up next to it. But you know. anyway, well, that was the 70th. Oh yeah, and I forgot. Um, there wasn't armor attrition, so all these guys are done. 
this guy was going to move, but he was really just going to go there. I had nowhere else to really put him, and he wasn't going to be able to participate in the attack, and a village is a good enough place to hide out in. So that's the end of the 70th move. Let's see who comes up for the Soviets. Yeah, I don't know. I'm going to have to really think about this. I was kind of hoping this battle would go better in Sultsi, and it's just been a couple of attacks, and it's so hard. The modifiers get so bad that if we don't have a clear turn and can't just get incredible air power, it's tough. It's going to be really tough. Okay. It is our friends the... Well, they're not my friends. I guess anybody's friends are really the SS. We won't discuss that in the last back of this game. Okay, the SS, and they're going to be up. Lost the camera then. So the question becomes for the SS is such is that we really need to get into an assault position here. So let's see. We have six. So what we can do is let's see. That's one, two. Oh man, did I not move those guys? Oh, that was a huge mistake. That was kind of a big, big mistake. Oops. Should have moved these tanks here during the 8th Panzer's turn. That was a crucial mistake. Because uh, these guys in a soul turn cannot make it around um, to there. They could if these guys were here. See if these guys were over here. I don't know. Some might be able to do okay, though. It's just three there. Maybe they can just stack. Am I just being exaggerating? Am I being dramatic? Yeah, I'm just being dramatic. This will work out. Although I'll have to do a roll for the artillery, but maybe I can stack them over here. Okay. So these guys are going to go here. They're going to do an assault turn. That means they get half their MA. So they'll go there because they can do that. That would just be a uh, two move anyway. Um. Oh, these guys have three, six, yes, yeah, so this guy can go here, I think, right? Because I'd be, well, maybe not. It'd be one, two, three, four. No, he cannot do that. So they're going to have to just hang out and maybe have to roll for coordination, which kind of sucks, but yeah, that's the way it goes. Um, okay, so that actually worked out kind of well because now they can assault this position, and that was kind of the key. They wanted to be able to bring their force to bear, uh, maximize also the 8th Panzer unit that was right there. So let's go ahead and try to calculate this battle. As you see, the remnants of the not-so-awesome artillery attack. Okay, so we know this guy has 10, but let's double-check. 3, 6, yeah, he's got 10. All right, so... And we are bringing to bear with an assault five, nine, uh, 14, uh, 16 with that guy. And this is nine, right? So that's what, uh, 25? I'm bringing 25 factors. We will be trying to use artillery. And because he cannot, um, there's nobody to combat react. Actually, wait, do they have a recon guy? Oh, they do. All right, this guy's going to try to combat react. Oh, he can't because he's in his zone of control, and they cannot combat react in zone of controls. So the units are just not that good. Okay, good. So we'll try to do some artillery here, and what we'll do is we will try to use... Oh, yeah, I guess. Ooh, it just won't be, it'll be just not enough. Yeah, he couldn't have done that anyway. All right, so yeah. Well, we're just going to have to hope we get the rolls. Maybe we'll use our points here. Uh, do we only have one HQ for them? Yeah, the SS only has one HQ. All right, so we won't use it on this. So we'll try to do this. We'll use this guy as the lead unit. So we need to beat a six because it's just an assault turn. Uh, is our guy in a forest? No, he's not. Great, so we just roll uh, with no modifier because it's an assault turn, not a mobile. We get a six, Whew, that passed, that's great. So we add eight, 
and that means we now have 33 to 10, so we get 3 to 1. Perfect. So now we start thinking modifiers, and we're saying defensive terrain, he gets plus 1. He does not get a stream bonus because there's a bridge there, so these guys are attacking, so he doesn't get the stream defensive bonus. He just gets plus 1 village. I have... Do I get a combined arms bonus? Make sure that works. If the attacking force is armored, uh, it doesn't say it have to be the same formation. And we do have um, motorized infantry and armor attacking. And the defender cannot have red defense strength being a town or fortified hex line. It does not. So I think we get a uh, minus one for combined arms bonus. Um, what else do we get? We're not going to bring, we don't have any air power. Well, we do have air power. We are going to bring it in for this battle. It's a five. So we're going to spend... Actually, we need that for combat coordination. Uh, so we need to roll a two or less on this. Oh, we got it. A one. A one. All right. Minus one for close air support. That's really big. And now we have to do combat coordination. We're going to spend because this, well, it's an assault, but not everybody's from the same uh, formation. So we actually have to do that. We're going to spend one. We're going to make our lead unit. This guy. He's just a one stepper, though. Yeah, we'll make him that. All right, so he's got six. Let's see, so what we're trying to do, we got to do a six. We don't have any modifiers because it's an assault. And, okay, so we're going to roll. We've got a minus one of our roll. A seven. So we actually just did it. So we got a six, right? Because there's no other modifiers. Right, because it's just an assault turn. And we're not attacking for more than three hexes. Let me double check all this, because that's really so close and very crucial. Four. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's it. We did. We passed it. Oh my god, that's so big. So our total modifiers are going to be minus one. So we have a three to one assault attack with minus one odds, and now we do the roll. Well, we rolled a seven. So we got a six, a six on three to one. Attacker one, defender one, disrupted. And armor attrition, but it doesn't matter. Oh, uh, it doesn't matter for this airplane, I guess. So attacker one, defender one, um, disrupted. And he's probably gonna lose, yeah, this guy. And he's disrupted. That's kind of good for us. Unfortunately, we lose this dude. He's a one-step guy. He's out. And he's disrupted, so that's the end of the attack. And it's armor attrition, so let's roll for this plane surviving. That kind of sucks for us. Oh, that does not count. It jumped. All right, I got two that jumped out. All right, this one counts. One. So the plane survives. Got a little hasty there, probably a little nervous in my rolls. Don't want to lose any more planes. Okay, so that is the SS. So very quickly before I run out of time here, because I see I'm approaching the limit. Let's see who is up for the Soviets. Activate any. All right, we're going to have to think about this one. When I come back, the mystery will be uh, revealed. So for the activate any formation marker, I've decided to reactivate the 70th, and instead of trying to do another low odds 2 to 1 attack, we're going to try and attack this stack, and it won't be really great odds either, but it's going to be a better attack than we could probably get anywhere else. And if we can do even a little damage, uh, and we're going to surround this unit as you'll see, so that maybe the 21st tanks on their turn can do an assault, and we can just gang up on it. So. Another risky move, but we've got to do something, and we've got to crack this uh, airport hex, because that's where they're keeping everything in supply. So we can drive this away. We're going to greatly weaken uh, 
uh, this entire area. And we have to do it quickly or else they'll be able to hold out till the end of the scenario. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to move these guys up here because they've got to you know, kind of act as a block. These guys are just going to shift down one this way, one that way, so they're ganging up there. This guy, we're going to need another disruptive burger. I'm going to split this stack up. Because this guy has um, only two movement because he's disrupted, so he can't quite make it down to this gap. So he's just going to go and one and and hang out there. And he's disrupted still. Um, this armor car can still make it because it has five movement, even though it's disrupted. So it'll go and one, two, three. And this is key because the armored car is going to let us get a mobile attack on here. It's going to be difficult to um, accomplish because of combat coordination, because we're disrupted uh, and attacking from three hexes. But, um, you know, we'll just have to try it out. So that stack we know because I counted earlier has uh, 17 defense. And what are we attacking with? Oh, well, I know this one. This is 15, and this is also 15. Uh, and that's two, because it doesn't really lose attack power because of being disrupted. It only loses uh, efficiency rating and also movement points. So we have 32 to 17. I couldn't, just could not find a way to squeeze another few points out of it to get two to one, uh, which is really unfortunate. So it's gonna be three to two. Uh, the defensive terrain, I think he's just in a clear hex. I don't even think he has. Yeah, there's not even a town there. This is why it's also maybe a better attack. Um, he does have an HQ with him, so I think he will do a no retreat. Because he doesn't want to leave that hex. And this may cost him a step, but that's just going to have to be the way it is. So he does no retreat. Um, we have no artillery to throw at this because nothing, our artillery off to the right that you can't see off map, it won't reach this hex. Um, we could bring in close air support. I think we will do that. Although, actually, we can't. We have only fours. And this was a mobile turn. So, yeah, we don't have any points to throw at it. So we can't, can't even bring our airplanes in. The Germans don't have any airplanes to use. So we don't have to worry about that. So now we just have to do combat coordination. And I'm going to be making that guy the lead unit. And we're going to spend one of our commander's points on this roll. So the modifiers we have here, it's a mobile turn, so we have plus one, but that's negated by our command points spent by our leaders, so there's no modifier so far. But we're also attacking from three or more hexes, and I believe that's a plus two. Let me double check. Yes. Yeah, it's a plus two. Oh no, sorry, plus one. Good, that's most of the roll. So, plus one in my roll, I've got to get a six or less. Oof. Roll to five, so just passing, that's big for us. So now we total up um, what we have here. I believe, where's my cheat sheet? There it is. I believe we get a combined arms bonus here because I have an engineering unit attacking. Motorcycle, motorized infantry. Oh, we don't have an armor unit though. So we don't have armor. Because that one tank apparently doesn't count as armor because it doesn't have a, a red strength. So we don't get a combined arms bonus. Um, our ER differential I think is equal because I'm using a six and he is going to defend with that motorized. That's a six. So there's no ER differential. Uh, there's no defensive terrain, and we pass our combat coordination. So it's a straight up three to two roll. All right, let's find out. Oof. So close. It was almost a one or a three, but it was a seven. It's not great. Let's see. Hopefully we don't have to retreat, but we probably will. Nope, attacker two, defender one. And it's armor attrition, but I don't think we have any unit that qualifies for armor attrition. Well, that kind of sucks. We lose our armored car. Or we're not going to lose our armored car, actually. Attacker 2, Defender 1. Okay. So the way this works out is this guy takes a step loss. Don't go down to there. And is there anybody else I want to take a step loss? I wonder if he really is an armor unit, though. 
yeah, one of these sixes is gonna have to get reduced. All right, so we did our reduction there. That was our attacker two, defender one. This kind of hurts them for sure. All right, we can take those kind of losses. We can we can handle that. Okay, so that sets us up pretty well if we uh, get 21st tanks. So let's see, well we know who's gonna go next for the Soviets, because there's a, or Germans, there's only third motorized, the only one left. So third motorized is gonna go, and that's gonna take a little bit of thought, so I will take another break. When we come back, third motorized. While it's taken a bit of time to finally get all of the third motorized together, uh, they've finally done it. They're all together in one kind of place. They're ready to conduct a very coordinated assault, and they have all the units at their disposal and pretty much close together with a lot of options for attack. So as you can see, I've sort of written down numbers to act as a memory aid because uh, you know, I try to plan the turns out before I record them, but then as you start talking, you kind of forget how much is in each one. I don't want to waste time counting uh, the stacks. The plan is very straightforward. I considered options of uh, coming over here and attacking the stack, um, and the main reason I did not do so, even though I have such a powerful stack, I could overrun that hex, but then I could not really go anywhere else to help with an attack. I'd be using almost all my movement just to have that be an overrun. Uh, instead, what I'm going to do is focus on the victory point hex, which is Utragorsh. I'm going to take my forces, I'm going to surround it, I'm going to do a uh, three hex attack, but because I have so many HQ points just floating around and artillery if I need to, which I'm, I don't think I'm going to need in this battle, which is crazy. I have crazy amounts of artillery. Um, I might be able to get four to one. We'll take a look at the artillery, I guess. Uh, we're going to attack, and we're just going to... Uh, try to get a co good coordination roll, and we're just going to try to push them out, because they don't have a strong point, so we can do mobile attacks. And we can still do mobile attacks, one, because we have the uh, armored car here, but we also actually have an armored unit. Uh, I believe he's hiding in the top here. Yeah, there he is. And he has the red strength, so we know he's armored. So the plan is this. On our movement, we're going to take this stack, and they're going to go here. My one fear is that perhaps like the 202 will just zoom around and try to come to Gordicia, which you can't see. Uh, that's over here. That's a victory point hex, right, that we took early on. But here's what we're going to do too. Dun, 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 dun. Enter the bicycle infantry, which I don't really understand. Maybe if people know what's up with bicycle infantry, because I'm rather new at this. Um, I mean, I get, you know, concepts of war and units and stuff like that. But like, really? Do they just have bikes? Were they really just bicycles? I don't know. I'm gonna have to look it up. But if someone knows in the comments, throw it out there. It'll be kind of fun to learn. Anyway, and one, and two, and three, and four. And the reason you can move that is because he's a reinforcement, and so the on any activation on that guy's turn, like that reinforcement's turn, he can activate for free. And I should be using the like. That was actually his final activation. So he's stuck there. Uh, that's actually kind of key, right? Because they can only be activated once if they're leg infantry, but if they're uh, orange circle or red box, you can get up to two activations out of them. Anyway, he's going to hold Gordishi, so I'm, I'm a little less worried about, uh, you know, breakout attacks or whatever. So we move that stack there. That's 18 points. We're going to take this 12-point stack, and it's going to go 1, 2... Three, four for the zone of control, and then five, six for going in here to another zone of control. So we've got 30 points so far, and here's the nine. So we come up the road and go in, and just become that, okay? This armored car is going to stay here with this uh, anti-tank unit, so that way this uh, infantry doesn't get any ideas to come out here and like try to attack the artillery. Now I do have... What was that? Eight... Wow, so I got like um, 14 points of artillery there. That's kind of ridiculous. I might as well use it on this attack. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna attack because we get we're gonna get two activations in a row essentially. Well, someone's gonna get activated for the Soviets, but the third will go again because they're the last uh, one to get activated. So let's go and do the battle calculations over here to the side. Okay, let's shift the camera over. Not hitting other units. Okay, so here's what we're gonna get. Uh, we know the sec is 13 defense. And we are bringing a total so far of 39. So let's see if we can get um, 
Oh, we need, we need 13, but we, but we can only use two artillery units. Yeah, we're not gonna use any artillery. Um, but he might get some artillery, we gotta think about that. Oh, I totally forgot. Uh, how could I forget such a simple thing like the guy's artillery? So Defender has to commit his artillery first, and he will. He has, oh god, I forgot all about this, that's okay. He's gonna have to use it. He's going to bring both of these to bear. No, he's just gonna bring one. We're gonna see what's up. He's gonna bring the six to bear. So he's gonna try to activate his six. It's a five roll. Uh, he's not gonna use his HQ points for this yet. So let's see, it's a mobile attack, so he gets plus one. Uh, he's gotta get a four or lower. No, he fails, so he gets half that value. It wasn't a complete uh, total whiff, but it was, you know, a half. So he's actually gonna be um, 16. Okay, so since the defender has to go first, then I will commit our artillery, and I have to commit at least enough to get six, because he's increased it by three. Actually, I need to get nine if I can. I don't think I can, though. Ah, uh, it's just gonna be not worth it, is it? Because I can get eight more points, potentially, but that would only give me, sorry, 47, uh, and that would not be enough, because uh, we need 48. Ah, uh, it's so frustrating. I forgot about that artillery. Well, that happens. We're not going to spend any artillery then. Um, damn. The six was just enough to do it. All right, so it's 39, 16, which is going to round down to two to one. Oh, sorry, I didn't even see these calculations. Okay. Two to one, I got a little sloppy there. Okay, so what do we got for odds? Or what are we doing for here? Um, since we're attacking the 237, uh, I think they're fully stacked. Let's see, this is three, four, five, eight. Oh, that's right, in the car down there. Wait, can they even have this? Oh, this, it's, this guy is illegally stacked. Oh, that's a rare error. I, can't, I did that on camera earlier, too. Well, they were kind of over here, so that's where he's going to go. And uh, I'm making that the on-call judgment. All right, so that changes a little bit. Just slightly. So instead of 12, or instead of 13, he had 12, and now he has 15. So if he has 15, we only need 45. And I think we can get that. That does change a lot, actually. Oh, that's too bad for that stack. So we need six extra points. It's no guarantee, because I can only fire off two of these guys. So that's what we'll do, we'll fire off the two threes. And there are six ratings. So we'll do that, and we'll use this artillery command point, the Arco command point. So it's gonna offset the mobile uh, DRM, so he's gotta get a six, basically, or lower. No, a 10. Uh, and that means a complete whiff, so nothing's added. It's a total, just normal 10. What bad luck for the uh, Germans there. Okay, so because they don't get that, it's still 39 to 15. Uh, that's still only good for 2 to 1, so all that's still just good for 2 to 1. Uh, it's really too bad. Anyway, so what do we got here? He has nothing he can... Well, I guess he's not going to react. He could have done a retreat. I really kind of went out of sequence here only because I got kind of excited. I've been thinking about this battle for a little bit. So, you know, that happens. Um, anyway, he gets a no retreat option. He should have had the ability to have combat reactions, but nobody can move in that stack. It's already full. Uh, nobody's going to move out of that stack. He wants to kind of hold it. And because of that, I say he, it's me. I want to hold it. I'm as the Soviet player. So I need a no retreat mark. That rating. All right. Got so many on the board. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to say that's automatic because his HQ is there. I believe, right? Yeah. All right. Minor interruption. But anyway, like I was saying. 
He gets no retreat. He has his HQ at the very bottom. So he gets out automatically. Uh, he can pass that because he has three steps of strength and whatever. He gets to pass it. Um, so he's going to do the no retreat. We did the artillery already. Uh, he could throw air at it, which I probably, I'm totally doing this out of sequence. Let me just be really clear on what you should have actually done. I kind of muddle it because you kind of can, but it really should have been close air support, then artillery, and then we do combat stuff, right? And all before that could have been reaction, no retreat, and all that jazz. So I, I'm muddling, I'm muddling the order, so, you know, forgive me, sorry. I just am. Um, okay. So he could do air support. He does have available air power, but again, it's cloudy and these guys spend points on it. See, this is the thing. It's low, he has a lot of air power, the Soviet does, but it's all low value, right? So it's gonna be difficult to get it in the game when it's, uh, I hate using that, I'm gonna stop doing that. Uh, it's hard to get it into a effective use when it is cloudy, because um, it's got a plus three modifier already and then it's plus one for being mobile. So you guys spend at least a point to make it a one, so very difficult. So they're not going to spend air power. Germans have no air power. We've done the artillery. Um, so now we just got to do combat coordination. For the Germans, they're attacking from three different hexes. So they're going to need to spend some points to make this work. Uh, they are going to spend two. And the lead unit, I guess I should be designating the lead unit. Hmm, it's going to be that motorcycle. Sorry, motorcycle guy, yeah, you're kind of uh, expendable. Not really, though. He's a 2-2. Two, two. It's very nice. It's a 7. I mean, at this point, I really just need uh, high-quality units and that aren't going to lose me VP, and that's him. Okay, so he's a 7. Uh, we're spending 2 points. It is a modifier of plus 1 for being attacking from 3 or more hexes and plus 1 for being mobile, so our command points cancel that out. So I just need to roll a 7 or less. <laughs> when you know it. Okay, so it's time to start doing DRMs. That's going to be the first one. We get a plus two for a failed uh, combat command, or command coordination, or combat, combat coordination. Um, he is in a city. He gets plus one for a village. He gets plus one for uh, no retreat. I think that's all his bonuses because he doesn't have anything else. No... Um, Surrounding terrain, right? Yeah, it's all just clear. And he's just in a village. Um, his point unit is probably not going to be that good. Yeah, it's going to be this five. So that's a differential of two. So at least we're getting that. Uh, we get minus two for ER. And we get a combined arms bonus. We do get a combined arms bonus because we're using both motorized infantry and an armor unit. So that's a uh, minus one combined arms bonus. And that's all the bonuses we can rack up. So that's minus three. That equals really just a... Oof, gotta move it down a little bit more. So many modifiers. Really just a plus one, right? So it's three there. That cancels the three. And that leaves just that one. So it's a plus one on a two to one attack that's mobile. Let's see what we get. A three. So three plus one is four. On a two to one attack, a four is a defender retreat. So because he did no retreat, he has to take a step loss. That's good. I mean, I mean, it's not amazing, but honestly, like, rolling a three is pretty good. So, like, we're not going to quibble with that. And next turn, we should be able to get, you know, better odds. Hopefully, next turn, we'll be able to just bring it really well. And we'll have artillery as well to be able to we'll have one less artillery unit. So, we'll have to see what happens. Anyway, that's the third motorized. Going to try to break through. All right. And for the Soviet activation... So they're down here. 
We're going to take a look at the situation, and we'll come right back. The 180th doesn't really have a lot of um, need to move much or get any sort of place. They're in a good position in the fact that they're going to be stubbornly hard to get to uh, and dislodge in the fact that these units can't really just abandon them because they can just come up here and cut the road again. So you really can't go ahead until you've really taken care of them. Um, so really, they're just going to chill. And the really sad thing is that these guys are disrupted. I mean, although I could only build one strong point, it would be good to build it here. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take an assault turn, and I'm going to build a strong point. Uh, I can only build one because my HQ uh, has only one command point, and that's the most you can build in any one, or uh, begin to build in any one activation. Uh, engineer units could just begin to build it uh, on their own because they're special and they can do that, but I don't have an engineer unit there. And... Because I know the SS is already gone, I know they won't be attacking me, and so this way I know it'll be finished and built. So I'm gonna start building it here because these guys are not disrupted. Disrupted units cannot build uh, strong points. This artillery is gonna come up here and just go to kiln. It's gonna go one, two, three, and four and hang out there. And that keeps it in range here. It's gonna get resupplied and get re new shells. Um, yeah, these units are probably gonna come get it. It's probably gonna get gunned down. But it wasn't going to be able to rejoin those guys, and if it has to do that, it draws them further away from here. Uh, and really, it's just buying time right now for me uh, as the uh, Soviet player. I'm just trying to buy time to keep these guys from moving up the road and uh, addressing this, which hopefully next turn I can get, begin to be, uh, begin to build strong points, just like I'm doing down here. Um, I need to double check and make sure how supply units can do that or whatnot. But he might be in supply next turn. I need to check that too. Anyway, so that's the 180th, and we know, of course, the very last um, German activation will be third motorized. That normally would not take too much, and I actually would just launch into that here, but I actually need to get rid of some of the videos on my phone and start over again. So I'm going to do that, and we'll come back. We'll actually have the conclusion of the third motorized, and pretty much the end of this turn, there's just two Soviet chits left. So we'll see what happens there, but almost end with this uh, seventh turn. Interesting. Okay, we'll be back. Or I'll be back, I guess. I don't know why I keep saying we. I guess I said that before once. Just me. I'll be back. Third motorized will just continue what it did last turn, and that is assault the Utragor text. Um, mainly because this unit now is taking a step loss, and I calculated the defense value again, and I, I had it wrong last turn. I don't know why. I don't know what was my problem, but it currently only has 10, and last turn that means it had 12, because the step loss only took away two defensive points. So I don't know why I called it, it had 13. It really does just have 10. So we're going to keep assaulting. Um, there's really no reason for me to try to outmaneuver because this is, uh, I need to focus and get this VP hex. That's the main reason. If I can start scattering the units here and, and press on the other VP hexes, I still have three turns to do so. So my goal here is just to take this and I'm willing to just grind it out. You gotta do it. They're in a you know well-defended spot here. Uh, well, not well-defended, but because <clears throat> a strong point would actually make this so much tougher. But they don't have that up, so they're gonna have to deal with it. So we're doing the same attack we did before. And uh, if we kind of look over here, we can get our odds going on. So I wrote that down there, but it really needs to be written up here. Same amount, same amount of attacks. We didn't lose any attack value. So it's going to be um, 39 to 10. We're going to see what the uh, artillery and stuff does first. Uh, I'm sorry, but first we're going to look at you know the, the what you should be doing. So can anybody combat react? Well, technically, these guys could kind of react, and they could because it, or these this stack could because it's two hexes away from the um, uh, attack or the hex under attack, right? Uh, that's an interesting thing about combat reaction. I don't use very much. Is that it's really kind of like a free move for some units around that area, and in this case, I'm you know I don't need to move those guys, but in a situation where something has happened and maybe you've already moved your guys, this could be a way to kind of reposition part of your line. Um, that's a not uh, something I've not really discussed or used much, but that's a part. The, uh, that's something you can do with the reaction move. Um, so I'm not going to do that. They're not going to be able to run away because they're all leg infantry, but they can do no retreat, and you have to keep doing it. If you're attacked, you lose the no retreat marker. I need to make that more clear. 
So you have to keep doing it because the conditions to get it may change, right? You may not have three steps of strength left, so you can't get it automatically, or your HQ unit may have fled, so you don't get it automatically. Um, they still have three steps, and they do have an HQ, so they are going to get a no retreat. Okay. If we look now at the, uh, I'll set the odds over there, right? So we have 39 to 10. They do have that artillery unit. Let's hold that like that, right? They do have this artillery unit over here, and it is a four. So they are gonna try to use it. So the defender gets to pick their artillery first, they will choose to use that, four points. We're gonna roll for it. Um, this time, I think the HQ will use his points because he want, he needs this to go down, or the HQ needs that to happen, right? So we turn that over. Oops. All right, so we turn that over and it gives us a one modifier, right? So this guy was, what is he? Yeah, he's a five unit. So we get plus one, well, it's not mobile, actually. It's going to be, well, it has to be mobile because it's a mobile attack. So it is mobile. So he has a plus one for it, and that's what this command point cancels out. So we need to roll a five or less on this roll. So get her done. All right, we got eight, and that means he does not pass. So he's going to only get half of his points. And it wasn't a total failure, so what does he have? He had four, so he gets two points. That means he moves from a 10 to a 12. All right. So that means we could get, uh, with 10, with 12 points, we could get three to one automatically, right? Because we have 36, but could we get to 48? Well, we can't. So we're not gonna use artillery points. We're just gonna keep the odds as they are. So that means we're gonna get three to one attack again. Um, He's not going to use airplanes because, of course, as we discussed um, in the previous third motorized activation, that it wouldn't make any sense with the, the low ER activation they have or ER ratings. Um, the Germans don't have any air, and uh, they're not going to use any artillery. So now we just try to do a combat coordination. Right, I guess I'll keep it here so we can keep our view in, right? So we combat coordination, and that means this HQ will use his two points. Our lead unit will once again be our fearless motorcycle infantry. And because it is plus one for mobile, plus one for having three plus X's, uh, or attacking from three plus X's, that means the command points negate that. So we gotta roll a seven or less. We roll a three. I see we, I don't know why I keep saying we, but I guess I kind of imagine myself as Part of the group, I guess, or the group, the hive mind, the hive mind for the Soviets and the Germans. Anyway, he passes, or, uh, yeah, so they pass. So there's no uh, modifier for that. So now we calculate what's up here. Well, he's in a village. Plus one, no retreat. Uh, we have, he's got the same, let's see what the ER difference, it might be bigger this time. Yeah, because he's just got that guy. So it's a four, so this time it's a three difference, so it's getting worse for him. So we get a minus three ER, and we get a minus one combined arms bonus. Um, and that's all the bonuses that guy gets, right? Because he's got no retreat, got the village, and that's it. Okay, so if we look at here, this time we get a minus two modifier. Oh, you can't quite see it there. If you add that up, if you look at all my stupid scroll, that's plus two but minus four, so we actually get a minus uh, two to the roll. So it's a three to one mobile attack, but a minus two, and we're gonna roll that. A nine. Wow, okay, so that becomes a seven. This was like a good odds attack too. Uh, I mean, not great, but this could have been good. All right, we'll see. Let's see, it's a three to one, we have a seven. That is a defender retreat. So once again, he takes a step loss, but he holds out. And that marker goes away, actually. And my guy takes a loss. All right, where's the other reduced unit? Wait, where's the other guy? Oh. All right, 
Yeah, yeah. so there we go. <clears throat> All right, so that guy took a loss. So it was three, four, five, six. Hold on one second, I'll be right back. Apologies, I was slightly confused because of the numbers about who, if there was a step loss already taken or if I had marked it, and then I sort of reconciled the numbers and, and I was just being weird. Anyway, this guy takes a step loss. But the stack holds, and now it just has eight defensive strength. But it's held through a turn, and next turn it'll get its artillery back. And the third motorized is going to have to figure out something to do. It may have to send some units to go get uh, this artillery in the back, just to tie it up so that it can easily assault this. I don't know. It's going to take some maneuverability and figuring out what we want to do here exactly. Anyway, that was the third motorized, their final activation. So we go down to the Soviets. Here's the 237, as we just saw there. Now, so this actually is very fortunate for them because they did not get disruption and they have an HQ and they can build a strong point there. So this actually was actually pretty bad for the uh, uh, Germans there. Because this is kind of the thing they didn't want to have happen, was have them build a strong point. Because that only has to be assault combats. There we go. We'll just start building this one. It'll be finished, of course. So he'll take an assault turn, and he'll do that. Um, what will these guys do? This guy will just come stack with them and hang out. And I could send... There is a guy here hanging out in this stack. He does provide almost half its defense, but he could run around here and try to go take on the bicycle unit in Gordicia over here, which you can't quite see. But that's kind of a long shot. I don't really know what value this point has in this kind of game. I don't know. I have to think about what I want to do with it, but ultimately, do I, should I just pull this guy back and just make him? He probably should just come back. Because now the assault's so bad. So let's try to pull him back, actually. Sorry, Hex. Sorry, Third Tanks. You might just be thrown away. So it'll be and one and two and three and four and. We'll just put him here. Well, he can't go there. Oh, God. So it's and one and two and maybe he just stays there <laughs> that seems like a horrible place to put him um Well, maybe it's got to go there. I think the stack is, that's totally a full stack. I know that. And I wonder if he can go, so it's two and yeah, no, he's got to stay there. So he's got an attempting target, but we'll see if they even go for him. I doubt it. It's <laughs> just one of those units that maybe they'll go for. I don't know. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Oh, wait, he's, he's under assault. He can't even go that far. He's got to go just and one and. So yeah, he's just going to have to hang out there because you can only move half your MA during assault turns. And I think that's going to do it. Oh, we also have this tank I haven't brought in. This reinforcement tank. It is a zero stack tank. It's very nice. Uh, it is armored. So I think what we'll do, though, is that honestly, it's going to need to maybe... <sighs> Will Udragorsh hold? The question is, to send it to Udragorsh or to help it defend, like this hex right here, which honestly, I kind of just want to help defend that hex for some reason. So I think we're going to do that. We're going to go and one and two and three and four and it hangs out there. Okay. Yeah, that's right. And one. Yeah, it's got it. Okay. So we'll bring that unit in and they're pretty much done. 237 is done. So now we look back in the cup. Let me see who we have left for this turn. And 
it is the 21st tanks. So this is actually going to be a very interesting turn because they're going to come try to gang up here on, uh, get this guy out of the way. I think the idea is to bring some of these units over and just try to gang up on this airport hex. So big battle coming up. We'll have to see what happens. Be right back. The 21st tanks are going to try to complete this sort of encirclement here of Sultzi, and they're going to do that in a few ways. One, this unit is going to take two of its guys and go here. And this tank's going to stay here, and I'm going to tell you why. This artillery unit's going to go one, two, three, and hold there, and this tank's going to go one, two, three, four, and join that. It's just a more powerful tank. That's what we're going to bring it in. These guys are going to use, since they're held down by fours, they're going to go and one, two, three, and they're just going to hang out there, and that way they'll stop any sort of attempt, maybe by the 8th Panzer, to come out here and move up the road. And hopefully next turn they can get in and help sort of totally surround the German forces here to get good attacks and good assault odds on every uh, activation they can. So having done that, we now will proceed with the attack here on this unfortunate hex, which the Germans now are going to be understanding how awful it is to be defending this airfield. They might have escaped, but they stayed, and they might be paying for it. So let's go ahead and pull these guys out and figure out their values. That's 5, uh, that's 10, 11, 12. All right, they have 15 points of defense there. Let's go ahead and write that down. So we have 15 there. Attacking them is a, just a, a huge amount. So we can move a little closer here. All right. Let's start with, oh wait. If this is gonna be a true assault turn, then I only get half MA, and so this tank would not have been able to go there. It actually would have had to stay here. This guy would have to stay here. He would have been able to move there. So they all could have moved there. And this guy could not have participated in the attack, and he would actually would have been able to only go two. Yeah. That's a better two spot. I like this better anyway. Okay, so this, they couldn't get the more powerful tank in, but, you know, that's the way that cookie crumbles, right? So, the same thing still happens. It's still going to be 15 defense, but now we're going to get a true assault on, because that's an assault turn, so we can actually declare, like, a, a legitimate assault where every other unit can participate. So this has 4, 8, uh, 13. So let's just start a little running tally over here, so we have 13. We have 13. This guy, it's a two, so it's nine, fifteen. So I'm sorry, that's a two, and that's three, it's nine, fifteen. So that's a seventeen there. And then we have the stack, which I should have just tallied earlier before camera, sorry. What we got? We got three, six, seven. 10? Is that what that is? Yeah, I guess it's been injured. Yeah, three. it's a 10. It's taking some lumps. So we basically have, what is that? 30, 40. So it's 40 to 15. 15, 30. Oh, we have five more. And this artillery can only give us four more. So we won't be able to get quite the attack we wanted, but that's okay. It's still going to be, what, two? Ah, it's just going to be two to one. That sucks. I'd rather get, like, better odds, but you just got to deal with that because they're going to have to make us leading at the tank. Nothing else is that good. And so these guys are going to have to make that motorized the lead. That's what we'll do there. Okay, so the Germans can... They could react moves. Is there anybody they want to react move in there? There's one, two... I'm sorry. This, what did I say? One, two, three, four, seven, eight. No, it's just one, two, three. Oh, my goodness. So you can't have anybody move in there. They're already stacked up their gills. Um, they don't want to run away. They want to hold that airport as much as it's going to hurt them. So they're going to put a no retreat marker on there because they have a HQ. So they'll do that. 
I'll throw a new retreat on there. Boy, they would have liked to have had some strong points built before all this uh, shenanigans went down, but that didn't happen. Okay, so there's going to be no artillery. There's going to be... Um, we don't have any airplanes coming in, and now we do combat coordination because it's an assault and it involves multiple formations and not and not just the same formation. We have to do a combat coordination check. Also, because this guy's disrupted, you have to do a combat coordination check. So our lead unit is this five. Uh, we don't have an HQ to help with points. So this is probably going to be bad for us here. And what we're going to do is we're going to say uh, we've got a plus one for being more than three hexes. But it's not plus one for being mobile, it's an assault turn. So we only get the plus one. So we have to roll a four or lower. It's gonna be a tall order. Oh man, fate smiles on the Soviets. It's a three. So they get a combat coordinated. Wow. Um, the ER differential though is gonna be one because it's a six unit there. So it's a plus one ER. That's all they get, it's a plus one. No retreat. We get. Um, we don't get a combined arms bonus. We don't have any true armor attacking. So we don't get that. So it's going to be a plus two to the roll. Uh, they don't get any defensive bonus, and that's all the bonuses we get. Okay, so it's plus two to the roll. It's a two to one assault. We roll another three. That's pretty good. Let's see what the five generates on a two to one assault. Attacker one, defender one, disrupted, and it's an armor attrition. Um, but there is no armor attrition. Uh, we didn't have an armor unit to qualify for that. So attacker one, defender one, disrupted. So we lose, that's actually pretty good. We lose that, he gets reduced a step. It kind of hurts, but you gotta, you gotta do that. Oh wait, did we have an armor though? We did have an armor unit. I forgot about that. Okay, so we actually did qualify for a combined armor's bonus. So hold on a second. That changes that role. So it was a three, but with a combined arms bonus, this now becomes a minus or a plus one. So it's just a four. And a four on a two to one is defender retreat. All right, that was a good catch. The reason I got combined arms bonus is because I had an armored unit, a true armored unit with red value and motorized infantry uh, attacking. Um, so that was actually a good catch. Good catch by me. Wow, nice. And wait, that's actually maybe not so true. Let me double check. Because you can only get it as long as the defender does not have red defense strength in a town, a strong point, or fortified hex. Well, he's not in any of the fortified hex stuff, and I don't think he has a red defense strength. No. Nope. So yeah. It's a defender retreat, so he suffers a step loss, and that is an armored step loss. We lose another victory point. So holding this is actually costing us. We lost two victory points here. We've lost one, was it two earlier? And we're only gonna get three from holding Salty. Well, we'll see. So that no retreat marker is lifted. So that was actually a very good assault. It was a very good assault. Um, nice, way to go, 21st tanks. Looking really rough for the Germans, but they're not dislodged yet. And if it doesn't end up being a rain turn, then I think they'll be okay. The rain turn could throw everything into chaos, though, with the hold salty approach. Okay, so that's the end of this turn. We've done all the activation markers. We'll get that out of the way. Let's take a look at. Oh, I'm doing this at night, if you can't guess. Move the book off. All right, so let's take a look at what the situation looks like for the entire map. There's Saltsy, surrounded, of course. The back is quite open, but there's no real way for the Germans to get there. Udragorsh has taken its lumps and is still there and holding out and will have a strong point next turn, making it more difficult to assault. Uh, the rear here is also somewhat threatened, but not really. The lost artilleries that are just basically having a great time, probably worrying about what the hell they're going to yell that for, for not even being in the battle. Uh, the 180th is camped out on the road. Or 183rd, I'm sorry, is camped out on the road. And if you look down here, we're trying to deal with the 180th here, who's also building a strong point, and it's gotten their artillery away. So, you know, mixed bag, uh, but definitely heading towards an exciting conclusion. So, onwards and upwards, the next turn is what? 16 p.m.? So when we come back, 16 p.m.?